Hi, my name is Gigi LeWinter. I'm an avatar in Second Life. An avatar is a representative of a real person in the virtual world. While most avatars in Second Life are human, this form isn't required. It's also possible to be an animal, have wings, tails, or anything that you could possibly imagine. In this project, we use the technology called Second Life, which allows the residents or the users to create anything they would like on their property, which are called islands in Second Life. Second Life is a virtual world developed by Linden Labs and is accessible through the Internet. A free client program called the Second Life Viewer enables its users to interact with each other through the use of avatars. The residents can explore a wide variety of islands, meet other residents, socialize, participate in individual and group activities, and create and trade virtual property and services with one another. For this project, the Westchester County Department of Senior Programs and Services, under the direction of May Carpenter, launched a special project for undergraduate students to build a virtual representation of a livable community inside Second Life. According to the AARP definition, a livable community is one that has affordable and appropriate housing, supportive community features and services, and adequate mobility options, which together facilitate personal independence and the engagement of residents in civic and social life. A livable community is a place where people of all ages and abilities will stay active, happy, and healthy as they grow older in their own homes and communities. For this version of the contest, we had three student teams, one from Pace University, one from Monroe College, and one from Manhattanville College. Each team was asked to build a home in the livable community. We asked that teams consist of a faculty advisor, no more than four or five students, and an unlimited number of advisors, allowing them to reach out to members of the community for advice. I'm standing in Carpenter Park, built by the Manhattanville team. Even though each team was only required to build a single home, many of the teams went above and beyond our expectations. Off to the side is the home built by the Monroe College team. Note how they considered handrails along the walkways for easy walking from the house to the park. The handrails extend to the back of the house and also continue over to the community chapel. The chapel was purposely built with wide aisles and easy access to the pews to accommodate those in wheel wheelchairs or walkers. Across Main Street are two entries by the Pace University team. The house was built on a single level to avoid the issues of ramps, stairs, or elevators between floors. Students thought about issues such as easy access to closets, removed rugs on the floor that could cause someone to slip, and kept doorways extra wide. In the kitchen, the students consider residents in wheelchairs. Here they lowered the main island in the kitchen and designed a refrigerator that was longer than it was higher. Perhaps not realistic in the real world, but it clearly shows what the students thought process. Looking across the street again, we see the entry by the Manhattanville College team. This is the foyer of the Manhattanville home. It was designed to be spacious for entertaining, yet cozy and warm. This is a three-story home, so to accommodate those with trouble walking, an elevator or ramp was installed for easy access to the remaining floors. Examples of bedrooms in these homes include low beds for easy entry, as well as bathrooms with handrails and easy entry shower doors. Our contest with the students was a huge success. After the initial pilot, we have an even larger number of universities approaching us to participate in next year's conference. While we don't have the contest formalized yet, we do plan to have the students build a full community, complete with schools, playgrounds, and perhaps food stores within walking distance. It's important to remember, this project is not about the technology. It's about changing the perspective of our young people. By providing a contest where they need to understand and think of the issues as they relate to the elderly, we hope that the lessons they've learned here in the virtual world will go back with them into the real world, causing them to pause and think when they plan new cities, build homes, or engineer new solutions for our daily lives. Thank you.